Let's move on to the next match. Maybe this is the one you were alluding to, Lisa, where you said the least of <laughs> the concerns oh. when it comes to in-game scenarios. Rain versus Racing Louisville FC. This one ending in a 2-2 draw. Rain getting to finally play at Lumen Field, host their home opener in the regular season. Coming off of some short rest, I've played a lot of games in a lot of in a short amount of days. Racing Louisville going up first in this one, but uh, Kiara King made it a game uh, in this match. It, it was an exciting bit of end to end in the first half, if I do say so myself. Just a little bit of what I was taking a look at. I enjoyed what I was seeing on both ends of the ball here. I like what we're seeing from this racing Louisville side. We're starting to see some differences in this team identity compared to their inaugural season in 2021. They're coming out and they're playing a little bit more. They're trying to get on teams and press a little bit, maybe a little bit more picking and choosing in this game, which is partially why I think maybe it might've ended in a bit uh, in a draw and it's in a high scoring one at, at, at that. But uh, to get that early goal, I think maybe that does mm -hmm. something for a team on the road a little bit. But unfortunately, they were unable to capitalize on that during this first half because we have this brace, this four-minute brace from Ziara King setting the tone and, and giving the rain the lead for a little bit in this, in this first half. And then they go into halftime, and it's like the reset button. Got hit yeah. a little bit. And here we go into the second half. And we have to talk about how this ended up being kind of leveled out because this is where some of the controversy is coming in out of this game, which for me, I think is a little bit unfortunate because we're having another game here that we have to come on this show and talk about things that maybe aren't just player performances. So here we are at the hour mark and we've got racing Louisville with a set piece. Savannah DeMello, who was a real standout player for me for racing and this match serves in a ball to the box, causes a little bit of chaos to his Joyce. The keeper for the rain gets a bit of a hand on it. Balser recognizes the movement on this ball, tries to make an attempt to make a clearance. There's a ricochet off the crossbar, a lot of activity, some celebration from Louisville players, confusion from rain players, yeah. and the sideline official says it's actually indeed a goal that the ball ultimately crosses the line, and it's 2-2 for the remainder of the match. Now, there's another scenario that comes into play, but I want us to talk about this one for right now, Lisa, because this is really one that is kind of having a lot of the attention on it for right now. At, there was a point during post game, the conclusion of the match in which Bethany Balser actually expressed some frustration about it, took to Twitter about it, said, after the game, I calmly went up to the sideline ref and asked him how he thought the ball crossed the line when I was blocking him from it. And he said, I'm very tall to, <laughs> to which I said it was still wrong. His response. Yes, I might've been wrong, but it's just a goal. And then she continues to say, it's just a goal puts, you know, the, the eyeglasses emoji. So there's um, some frustration there uh, for sure. I think in, in a multiple, multiple ways, multiple. I mean, the, the referee <laughs> saying to Balser, I'm very tall. <laughs> I just I didn't see it. I'm just and, saying, my guy, you, you don't have to say anything, actually. You don't to, have to respond. You don't have to <laughs> respond at all, actually, to be quite frank. Um, that's the truth. Is, you know, you can players can go up and ask many things of the officials, and the officials can actually just keep it moving. And that's their uh, that's their right within the game as officials of the game. Yeah, but th this was uh this was again a, a, a a, a bit of frustration kind of spilling over into social media, but, but Lisa, I don't know if you, you caught it. I know you had a busy evening tonight, but I did hop into some post game availability. Yeah. Uh, how was Harvey? You know what? She's having a tough week. Yeah. I can't, I can hardly blame her. She didn't have a lot for, you know, for, for the media and the post game. And, and I respect that 100%. This is, 
been quite the grind, I think, for this team. And I think maybe they're a little bit hard, you know, felt a little hardened by some of the events that have occurred over the last eight to nine days or so. Asked at one point within this presser from some local media to to chat a little bit about it. And she literally said, yeah, honestly, I don't feel like I can say anything because I'll get fined because I'm not allowed yeah. to publicly speak about the officials. That is a quote that I'm reading, you know, that I transcribed from this, uh, this post game, you know, and she further went on to say that I, I just can't talk about it. It's beyond a joke right now. So there's no point in me saying anything. So this is just, you know, you could just, you can sense it. You could just tell that the yeah. team is is just sort of frustrated with these in-game moments that are very clearly impacting results of games. Oh, completely. And and affecting player safety. I mean, not necessarily this one, if it was a, a boss or own goal. I love our chat because uh, we've got a lot of opinions in here. Sorry, Bethany. It was a goal. Like, um, it was a goal. Clearly an own goal. So I love that, guys. Keep joining us on, on YouTube and in well, the chat here because I love to see it. But they, it, it's been known that the coaches used to have a group chat among themselves. Um, and, and this year, they've actually expanded that to be biweekly calls with the league to chat about certain things like Challenge Cup scheduling and, and playing the same team back to back to back in the first month of a regular season or going on the road for three weeks at a time or four weeks at a time. So they have those conversations biweekly with the league. And although Harvey can't say anything verbally in a presser like that because that's how she gets fined, when they have these biweekly calls with the league, it's, so it's all the coaches on this call talking to the league about how they can better the league, how they can grow it, and what resources the coaches need to do that. I am positive that this is going to come up and, and the officiating throughout the weekend because that's been a huge topic of conversation and not just player safety, but um, – Sir referee, it's not just a goal. It's, it's the difference that. between winning and losing a game and, and goal differential. There's so many different things that come out of it. And we could talk about the the Kansas City penalty that yeah. happened. We can talk about adding extra time to that game. Yeah. Um, there's a million different things. And pro referee is very um open to those conversations and very open to learning and explaining things. They we had a call as broadcasters with pro referee before the season that we got to ask them certain questions. What's considered a handball? What if the arms yeah. are behind the back? We got to ask questions and they explained a lot of things to us. So that that open communication is there. Um, I'm I'm interested if we hear anything about this biweekly coaches call. Well, here, listen. Here's the <laughs> here's the wild thing about this for me that took place at, in the moment, which added to more chaos at the time. They initially this goal that took place. They initially called this an own goal off of Angelina, which I think further maybe <laughs> added a little bit to the confusion. Uh, and if you look at this set piece, if you go back and look at this replay, Angelina is nowhere even <laughs> in the box. She's like 21, 22 yards out. And this is all occurring within the six of, of the of the box. And so I was like, they that's credited to Angelina. Like, how is that even? possible but now a couple hours later i see that it's been uh, officially corrected it's now been credited to balser there are multiple angles on this goal and uh i think you see initially the ball hit the line and i think it's on the clearance you see balser's boot kind of tap in behind the line to try to clear it uh and perhaps maybe that is something that pro referee if they still could get nasty about it are going to look at but it's very very tough when you're calling making trying to make those calls yeah, uh, in, in real time decision exactly yeah. in a split second you have to make that decision and make that call and hopefully you have a good sideline official that's on the sideline and can see and perhaps the only thing that could be blocking him um, if not a player standing on the post is the post because that's where the sideline official should be um i want to ask about the the back pass the the handball that oh, happened when where to save the ball off the line and yeah. then it's grabbed by tullis joyce thoughts on this 
uh yeah i was a little bit surprised that that also wasn't called and that was very early in the game as well uh i don't know if the ruling behind that is is has something like intent that is behind it uh but that's, we'll say, that's what i think it is we'll that's have to take a is. little bit and it it technically was not a back pass it technically yeah. was forward, forward uh you know so there's some things that come into play so on that but that was that was early yeah. that was in the first half and then we have this moment at the hour mark where there was some confusion around there and there was also uh, added, you know, moment where there was a foul between Katie Lund came out of the box to try to make a play on the ball as, as Balser was trying to, to go to goal and there was no um, red that was issued there. So the argument on, from the rain bench talking about that, maybe that was, you know, a direct, you know, uh, foul and, and, you know, do a little bit of dog. So in play, and uh, you can hear on the mics and the sides and like, how oh, was that not a red? You know, there's a lot yeah. of frustration that was spewing out on this one. But uh, there's I think there's like certain there's like four or five points that you have to actually check off as an official, like mentally as an official to sort of make that r official dog. So like red card. Um and I'm not too sure if maybe there's a, a lot of them were checked. I mean, part of it was maybe the actual distance from the player and the goal and stuff like that. So that, yes. that kind of stuff comes into consideration. Those are very difficult uh, to call. But at this point, this is like the culmination, right, at this point of, of all the other stuff prior. And it just sort of felt like it just sort of felt like it was becoming a little bit more of a mental battle for for the rain if they were looking to maybe come out as the victors on the end of this one but it ended out in regulation is 2-2 and they're both splitting the points so congrats to both teams i guess to walking away with a point we will see what comes out in the aftermath for both of these teams in week three we got one more to get through though lisa so let's talk about angel city versus orlando pride we got to give we got to give Deb, we got to give proper to Orlando Pride. Congratulations yeah. to the Orlando Pride getting their first win in 2022. Their first win since September of 2021. 12 matches. It's been a long time coming. Enjoy it. And they got it on the road in Los Angeles at Bank of California Stadium mm -hmm. where Already very early scenes have shown, shown us that this is a difficult place to play in terms of, you know, if you're the opposition and you're going in there and seeing all of the support around the the home side here. So uh, Angel City, Orlando Pride, Lisa, I know you're on the call on this one. When you were looking at perhaps maybe something like the, the starting 11s in mm -hmm. this one. Uh, were there any surprises? Were there anything? Was there anything that maybe kind of tipped you one way or the other? Because I know you and I both, we had Angel City picking this one and we get to talk about how we were wrong. <laughs> so so perhaps if you asked me the starting lineup question when I wasn't on the call, it would have changed things. But yeah. as broadcasters, we get to talk to the coaches before the matches. And that gives us a lot of insight as to how players are doing in their recovery of injury or kind of what's happening. Um, the biggest surprise for Angel City for me was Allie Riley uh, being out yeah. on COVID protocol because that happened last minute. Yeah. That was a very last minute change for Angel City that happened. Um, the other one that was a last minute change was uh, Via Corta for Orlando being moved from out to questionable just an hour or so before this match kicked off. Um, we have some people in our chat asking about Simone Charlie, why she didn't start. She was listed as questionable. She's still yeah. coming back from that injury. So she's on minute management and, and training staff and Freya Coom and um, Spencer, or excuse me, Simone Charlie decide that she's better coming off the bench and she's better in the second 45. So that those are the decisions there um, being very frank, what the coaching staff and, and training staff has expressed with us. Uh, but otherwise, no, like it, it was no surprise to see Hammond get the start in the back line for, for Riley. We've seen that rotation through a lot. Um, Megan Reed getting the start in the back line for Angel City as well. And, and when you look at Orlando. I think Sydney LaRue was maybe a bit of a surprise for me, just considering um, leading up to this match, they weren't sure how her recovery was doing, but this was her first start since March 30th. And man, is Orlando really happy to have Sydney LaRue back? Um, but uh, otherwise, pretty status quo from the lineup that we've seen from Amanda Cromwell and, and from Freya Coombe throughout the Challenge Cup and, and the opening match of the regular season. Um, June Endo, I'm, I'm glad she got the start yeah. as well. It's, it's tricky to have her in the front line because she does do so much better when she's in the center of the pitch, but that, that shift did ultimately happen throughout the match in, in this one. 
Yeah, I feel you. When I was looking at the starting 11 on this one, I mean, it was great to see a player like Clough get some time yeah. for Orlando Pride. Uh, I mean, making a note that we're seeing a, a consecutive start for, for Aaron McLeod in net for them uh, once more. Huge, right? Great. I'm sure they're grateful to have her uh, back in net. And obviously the return of Sydney LaRue, who has been navigating some injury for a little bit, but hopefully the time off has served her well because she got things cracking pretty early in this one. Lisa, keeping you all in the booth on your toes. We're talking yes. just minutes into Third this minute. game. Third talk minute into this match. I mean, Orlando, they started, they started hot. And and insight a little bit, Freya Coombe saying that um, – in the first regular season match for Angel City against North Carolina, they scored in the opening three minutes against North Carolina. And Freya Coombe saying she was a little bit nervous. It's it's yeah. hard to hold a lead that long against a yeah. team like North Carolina. And the fact that then it gets turned around and Angel City has that happen to them in the first three minutes. But the the attack that started this match for Orlando and the pressure that they immediately put on Angel City was really impressive to watch. And I think that stems from Sydney LaRue being back and, and giving that energy and that enthusiasm. Um, it was also a bit of a homecoming for Amanda Cromwell uh, at UCLA for years. A number of players, LaRue being one of them, Jenkins being another that came out of UCLA, now back in LA playing professionally. That's huge. Uh, but this opening goal was, um, I, I think it was an own goal, honestly. Okay. Um, but it hasn't been changed yet. I mean, I would love to give the credit to Sydney LaRue. It's Mother's Day. She just had her birthday celebration yesterday. Uh, but as this ball comes whipping into the box and it gets past Heritage, which I don't even know how that happened yeah. because great goalkeeper and it slipped under her arm. But then LaRue is on the back post and she shoots it, but it's it's Reed who actually kicks it and, and okay. changes the trajectory of the ball. Like, so it wasn't. So you think going, it was actual, like, like need into the back I of the net? She it. I think okay. she tipped it. That's why I think it was uh, an own goal. I mean, it still hasn't been changed technically yet. So I shouldn't be saying this. It's Sydney LaRue's goal. However, <laughs> what, I, I believe that the rule is if a ball is going towards the net and it skims off another player or, or something like that, it's not considered an own goal because the ball was already heading into the back of the net before it hit anyone. But when you look at this, Reed is deliberately trying to clear the ball and she kicks it, changing complete direction of the ball. Instead of hitting the back of the net on the ground, it hits the top of the inside of the net. I don't know. It's not deemed an own goal yet, um, but, you know, this is a podcast. I get to give my thoughts. You do. And I love to hear him and I love to talk about him with you. But I think that you're mentioning Freya Coombe and, and the concept and or, or the game scenario of having to play through an early lead. And I'm, I'm thinking about that in this case, but with Orlando and I had that thought watching this game, I said, okay, this has not happened often for this team in 2022 and or in a while. Uh, what are we going to continue to to see from this from this pride side and knowing that Angel City has some pretty, pretty darn good attacking pieces of mm -hmm. their own, you know, whether it's a Junendo or a Kristen Press or a Tyler Lucy or a Simone Charlie off of, of the bench, uh, getting Savannah McCaskill, you know, involved in, in, in link up play with them. Oh, uh, I was a little curious. I was like, how is this going to play off? And I know there were moments throughout some of their challenge cup performances from Orlando pride. Where we talked a little bit about maybe some of the physical play that we were seeing from this team. And it, is that something that's going to lead to results for them? They're going to have to figure out a way to try to, you know, uh, evolve that a little bit more. So here they are getting a very <laughs> early goal in this game. And then uh, I think going ahead and maybe, you know, getting a little physical in, in the game to try to ensure that mm -hmm. they carried the victory through, you know, through the 90 minutes. I mean, ultimately, you know, the fouls maybe kind of evened out a little bit, but we're talking 13 to 15 compared to uh, Orlando and the passing, you know, between the two, the, also very even 316 from Angel City to, you know, 326 to Orlando Pride. And I'm just sort of curious about may maybe a little bit of, you know, making sure that they try to keep the ball just a little bit more 
And if they didn't have it, maybe just (laughs) bodying up just a little bit more when they had to. It's almost like they had the goal to be able to continue to play maybe a little bit of that more physical type of game to ensure that they could try to walk away with the win. And I think obviously a ton of credit also has to go with the fact that they do have somebody like Aaron McLeod back in net because she definitely faced some dangerous attempts here in the attack, but uh, happy mother's day, right? (laughs) I think that's the best way to put it. I mean, Sydney LaRue getting the goal so early on and, and huge celebrations from her too. It was really fun. I know you gave a shout out to Erin McLeod. I have to double that. She had a tremendous game, um, oh, yeah. especially coming back from injury. She kept Orlando in that game a number of times. Um, I don't know if you got to see this or not or watch it on replay as many times as I did. Was Kristen Press offside? Listen, you're asking me, you're asking Sandra? Well, yeah, I want to know. I want to know your opinions. I don't think so, but I'm I'm just like everybody else watching a specific angle in a exactly. specific stadium I know. on a specific day. So, it, you know, well, I, it's it's one of those things where you wonder if it will. And you also wonder if something like a VAR would confirm it or not, because you're talking about some technology that goes by the inch you know so who it goes who by like the sleeve of a shirt yeah, yeah. in so the like, Premier League here so I was I, watching I told myself like oh this is this maybe this is like what it would feel like if we had VAR <laughs> everyone's disappointed that it didn't count you know like exactly exactly um the, this play was really tough to watch because as you mentioned the camera angles and things like that and as um someone for this you could see like the grass marks in yeah. and how they cut the field and at, from that perspective i think she was off yeah i honestly do i think that i, I forget who it was it may have been carrie lawrence yeah. on the near side of the d maybe where, once like, i take a look at that angle i'll be like yeah yeah <laughs> i it was just a hair like it's it's not a lot it's not a full body's yeah. worth but it's like that shoelace the, the the egglet at the end of the shoelace you know like that's all it was but hey that's what the rule is um i think i think she was off that's that's always what it comes down to right inches blades blades of grass i think Seriously. at this point but uh what a time for nwsl early two weeks into the regular season and we made these predictions thinking that we were going to be solid and we got our first draw of the season with all rain and racing louisville we've got San Diego wave on the top of the standings, you know, we've got uh, Angel City unable to bounce back and maybe get a result out of this one after coming off of a huge home opener in franchise history. So uh, I love it here, man. This is this is what it's about here. I love it here. Uh, you know, maybe next week we'll have we'll get to chat a little bit more of the game and less of the no calls or yes calls or maybe calls or what calls, but we'll see. 